Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to do riders where we are going to take all the previous theorems that we have learned and we are going to use them. Two circles meet at P. Right, and then they are telling us AM is a diameter. Now, as soon as they give us information that is relevant, you need to write it down. So what do we have? We have that AM is a diameter. But we know if we have that AM is a diameter, then what does that tell me about P1? I am going to immediately have that P1 is equal to 90 degrees. Now why? It's angles in a semicircle. You cannot, okay, and I'm saying this again, you cannot give values without reasons. If you do that, you are going to waste your time because the marks are mainly here where the reasoning is. All right, then they tell us TB is a tangent to the smaller circle. Now look, if TB is a tangent to the smaller circle, we are aware of the angle that is tan chord. So we know this B1 is going to equal to N. Okay, we also, okay, so when they give you information, as soon as they give you information, you need to go through it. You need to say, hey, but you know what? I know this. I know this. So we know that with a tangent, there's three theorems, right? It's a tan chord theorem. Then we know it's tangents from two points. We don't have two points here. And then we know that it's tangent perpendicular to radius. But they haven't told us anything about this line B and being a radius. So that is out. But we know that tan chord can work. So you mark it so that later if you need it, you've got that information. Then they go on to say that RPS is a common tangent. Again, tangent rules. Tangent rules are very important. Okay. So we know that three tangent rules. Again, tangent from same point. We don't have two tangents. That rule falls away. Tangent perpendicular to radius. We don't have a radius. That rule falls away. But tan chord theorem. We know that. So we know if this is a tangent then this angle is going to equal to B2. We also know, you can see here, that this is vertically opposite. So we know that this 2 is equal, but then this is a tangent, so the green. But notice what I'm doing. The angles that are the same, I am marking it or coloring it the same color. I'm also coloring the word that's helping me get this information the same color. Let's look what they are saying. They are saying that we must prove that BN, right? So where's BN? BN is a diameter to the smaller circle. Now, what do we know about a diameter? A diameter produces an angle that is 90 degrees. You already got that P1 is equal to 90 degrees. But if you look, if P1 is equal to 90 degrees, what is P4? P4 is also equal to 90 degrees because they vertically opposite. Now, vertically opposite is a rule of grade 9. Now, if it is 90 degrees and it is produced by Pn, then we can say, okay, it's 90 degrees, therefore, Bn is a diameter. Remember the rules work back and forth. Now, that was the first question. Now you've done, you've proven that A, B, N is a diameter. But look at what happens. Now you should realize, hey, but I have a tangent, T, B, and now I have a diameter. So that should tell you something specific about this angle. A tangent and a diameter is the same thing as tangent perpendicular to radius. Now, you don't know if you're going to use it. You don't know if they need it, but you need to keep it in the back of your mind. If they give you a diameter, you must know diameter is radius. Radius and tangent gives you 90 degrees. So you mark it. You haven't put it in, but you mark the information. Now, what do they want us to prove? They want us to prove that AM, AM is parallel to NB. Now, if you look, you've already highlighted all these greens. 
And if you look nicely, you'll see that this B2 and A make alternate angles. Okay, so what do we have? From all the green we know that P5 is going to equal to B2. Why? Tan chord. Remember, no reason, no mark. Then we got that P5 is equal to P2, vertically opposite. And we've got that P2 is equal to A. Again, tan chord. Now, what does B2 equal to? It equals to A. So I now have I now have that B2 is equal to A, but they alternate or they form alternate angles. Therefore, AM is parallel to NB. All right, now let us go to the next question. The next question says, Prove that M, P, B, T. Prove that M, P, B, T is a cyclic quad. Now, how do we prove that it is a cyclic quad? We know that this line is parallel to this line. Why? Because we just proved it. And if you prove something is parallel, then immediately you know, hey, that I'm probably going to use that somewhere. They don't give you anything for nothing in geometry. If they tell you something, then you must know, hey, I'm going to use that, eh? So if they told me that this is parallel, I know that A is equal to B2. But what else do I know? I can see that the alternate angles are running this way. So I have that N is equal to M1. Now why am I using blue? Because I already have that N is a blue color. Because it's going to equal to that B1. So what am I writing? So I'm going to say that M1 is equal to N. Why? They are alternate angles. You must remember in geometry, anything they give you before, you're going to use it. The next are most likely you're going to use what you've proved before in the very next question. Now if I have M1 is equal to N, I can see that M1 is going to equal to B1. But why is M1 equal to B1? I have that B1 is equal to N. If we look that B1 was equal to N, why did I have that B1 was equal to N? Because I knew that it was a tangent TB is a tangent to that. So tan chord told me that, hey, you know what? B1 is equal to N tan chord. Now I have B1 is equal to N. I have N is equal to M1. But look at N1 and B1. That would make M1 and B1 equal. Now, if M1 is equal to B1, M1 is an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. From your rules, we know the three things that work with cyclic quads is if the opposite angles are equal to 180, if the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite and angles in the same segment. Now, to prove a cyclic quad, we need to work with any of these three. And if you look again, then the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite. Look interior opposite so we can say that if b1 is equal to m1 then m p b t is a cyclic quad but why is it a cyclic quad because the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the interior opposite angle. So sometimes you need to prove something and say, hey, if this is happening, 
That's why this is happening. So we proved that B1 is equal to M1. And if that happened, then it has to be a cyclic quad. Now they want us to prove that T is equal to 90 degrees. We already have that this P4 is equal to 90 degrees. And if you look at P4, it's an exterior angle opposite to T. Can you see? Inside, opposite. So angle T is equal to 90 degrees. Why? Because P4 is equal to 90 degrees. That was proven. And P4 is an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. And T90 is the interior opposite angle. So therefore, P4 is equal to T. Thank you for watching.